through another <clears throat> excuse me, design creative video, this time about taper plugs and materials. Uh, we're referencing uh, Orlov Volume 2, figure 152 on page 184. You can see what we've got here. Uh, I've modeled half of it. In the top row, we have brass plates represented as these uh, discs with tapered holes matching the taper themselves, of course. And underneath we've got the same but in opposite materials, steel plates with brass plugs. Now, Orlov goes through some discussion and talks about uh, deformations a little bit. We do this in, in class uh, quite a bit more. And this is the follow-up, which is how does uh, simulation uh, react to all this stuff? Do we get the same answer, which we would hope, or do we end up with something else entirely? Uh, I've already ran the simulation. This takes a really long time, uh, even on the cloud, uh, in the middle of the night. It's still about uh, half an hour or so. So if we look at the results that I got, um, we can see the material here. Again, remember that the top part is the brass base with the steel plugs, and the bottom is the steel plate with the brass plugs. Let's go through these one at a time. Orlov talks himself about uh, what this all means and compares the three. He uh, implies that, or not implies, tells us that this is bad. The plug is proud of the surface uh, sticking out on the top and it's not making all the way through the plate so it's not long enough to make it through. He says that the middle option here is better, where it's protruding out above, but importantly starting to stick through the plate. Uh, he finishes off with last saying that the third option here is best, where the plug is below the top surface of the plate and protrudes through and beyond the bottom surface of the plate. He also argues that it doesn't matter about the material, um, brass going into steel, or steel going into brass. Let's have a look here. What does all this mean? Uh, normally, when you start up a simulation, you get a, a report. If you unless you've turned it off, uh, you'll get a report on safety factor. Um, sorry, I've got it set up here that way. Go back to that in a second, and it probably also starts off banded. Now, banded is fine because uh, it shows you kind of um, you know where the the very basic sort of regions to look out for are. You can pull these around still, but you'll notice the band kind of jumps around a little bit too much. Um, for me, I prefer to see the trend, so I tend to turn banded off. You can pull this around if you wish. Uh, you'll see a hand appear when you're kind of in this vicinity. There's no grip here in particular. Now, if we just look at one at a time, um, safety factor tends to be, <laughs> we hope, linked to stress. So I'll look at the stress. We see where we expect, right? Around this top corner, it's quite a bit of stress. Where, what we talked about in class, is this tends to deform around the top edge. Now right now we've got a brass base with a steel plug, so the steel is harder than the brass. So we would expect the brass to deform quite a bit uh, before the steel deforms. However, as we discussed, it turns out both deform um, because of the mysteries of stress, but nonetheless they both deform. Let's have a look at that. You can use an adjusted view now, this is obviously enormously magnified displacement here. Our total displacement is probably around, there we go, it's about 0 0.003 millimeters. So three thousandths of a millimeter. That's tiny, tiny. So this is not a real deformation. This is just showing us the general trend. What do we see here? 
this is a again brass base with a steel plug now let's remember what it looks like there we are now we can see what we expected right we've got this kind of ridge or rim around the top of the plug and it's also denting it down and pushing down the plate similarly on the base interestingly we have this sort of hook shape developing right down at the very bottom and a swelling and a splaying of the plate as it pushes through in other words this plug is gripping twice it's gripping at the edge where it's been pushed through the plate and where the base of the plug is being scraped into the plug hole or the hole in the plate this is double bad this is why Orlov calls it bad obviously what about his intermediate solution that's okay you see as is same thing again big kind of rim developing around the top but this time because the plug pokes all the way through goes beyond the depth of the plate it doesn't create this hook it starts hooking into the plate so instead we get it pushing the plate apart as the plug is driven down through the hole this is better than the previous example because there's not a double hook but here we've got this rim still at the top which is sticking into the plate and stopping the plug being lodged properly into the tapered hole Orlov says this is the best is it in fact true it is we've got no rim and instead the opposite the top edge of the plug is actually being bent in now remember this is still a steel plug so it has been bent in slightly we can also see it's fl flaring out swelling in the taper hole as the pressure pushes the top down and in in the middle it pushes the outside surfaces out this is what wedges the taper plug in the tapered hole you can see a bit of flaring at the bottom but the pressures on this inside top surface this is most functional so perfect what about the other option brass plugs in steel plates let's have a look here so we've got our steel base and our brass plug we see the same pros the same sort of shapes developing more accentuated because of the different materials we've got a, at the top here we had a rim developing with a hook down and the other opposite material configuration we see the same thing so we've got our steel base hidden here see that really well quite accentuated rim going around that would really hold on because again we are here with the plug sticking out above so this is potentially the worst so again we have the rim gripping and a small hook developing it's put to form in the plate quite a bit as well second option we still have the rim the hook at the bottom is gone because we started with the plug through the plate so this is our second option but again surprisingly perhaps same sort of behavior we're getting from the opposite material where the plug is harder and the plate is softer last option that's where we start same as before we now have a low soft plug in our steel base you get the same good result there's no rim here it's been bent in and there seems to be the the deformation of the top surface by the load is actually wedging the plug taper plug into the tapered hole we get a small separation down here at the bottom which is good so we're not getting any lower hooking nice so in summary or 
Kirillov is in fact correct as far as simulation goes, that no matter what the material is, uh, either hard plugs with soft plates or soft plugs with hard plates, the third option is still the better design. So that's where the, in the direction of the load, the load here, you can see that the taper plug should be below the surface of the plate and the end of the plug should be protruding past the lower surface of the plate. This is the same result for both cases and both so it's material uh, and that's it. Uh, I am going to stop the talking about this. I'm going to do just about a minute of discussing the setup of this. So if you want to stop here this is your chance. If you want to know what all these symbols mean I'm going to talk about these just here for a second. Moving on to a little bit more detail about the the simulation itself here, um, and a little bit of use of the application. First, what does this mean? We've been using this constraint, which is a frictionless constraint to act as a sort of mirror. Uh, what it does is twofold. It decreases the number of elements that have to be solved and gives us a cut plane, slice plane in fusion world. This saves us uh, from having to do a lot of waiting, twice as much, uh, and also gives us a nice view into the part. If you would like to use a slice plane, you can, I'm going to just delete this one. We can go for S for shortcut, slice plane, pick any flat surface to start, and drag in. Uh, once you're doing this, uh, you can, for example, turn on the mesh. You can turn on vectors if you wish. And the vectors can be, you know, all sorts of stuff where the size is proportional and you can adjust how many there are, all that sort of stuff. Um, I tend not to use vectors too much. Um, I do like to show the mesh though. Uh, it is a 3D mesh, which is great. And clipping, if you want to turn that on, basically just creates a, like a 2D representation of the stress at that point, which is, can be useful or not. It's up to you. Um, the grid is how you control the vector. So if you use grid lines, and you can change the grid to show tighter or looser. Uh, vectors. Once you're done, uh, you can turn off the visibility of the plane. You can also suppress the slice plane. To edit the slice plane, for example, say I don't want these vectors, so I can see the plugs moving more than the plate. That's, I think, fairly obvious. You can turn off vectors. Say OK. And then you can suppress the uh, this part further is set up last but not least. The fixed is around the, back, the circular sides of the so representations of the plate. And the loads are just perpendicular on the top of the plugs. Now this is not completely um, accurate. This would be maybe how the plug would be set up at the beginning. Uh, the real situation is much more complex, of course. Uh, these plugs tend to be spun in um, and tend to have much more complex uh, connections in through here. Uh, as far as how to control that or somewhat represent that inside of contacts, oh, inside of contacts, you can see that I'm using the rough contact type. Uh, this is the best uh, contact for trying to create at least something similar to reality, which is this screwed in or spun in uh, taper inside a matching hole in a plate. 
Um, last but not least, how to investigate your results. Uh, often we're quite interested in stress. Once we get past, you know, which one's better, uh, you can hide case. You can actually drag things around to look for high stress. So you can see where the stresses are uh, comparatively. Um, you can also, and this is in a way more interesting, you can also see what is comparatively higher stressed. The different materials do lead to different stress patterns uh, in the ratio, like how quickly they grow. So you can see, for example, the top has higher stress in these. Now, which one is which? Uh, is it the brass? No, the, so the steel plug actually has higher stress in the brass. Oh, plate. So you can use the simulation pack to figure out what option you like. Or to pick a different plug material given a one uh, plate material. Safety factor, same as before, you can pull this around. Now usually anything above say three or four, maybe even five or six is overbuilt and we see the whole system is fairly overbuilt as is right now. Now one question that does come up is that, well, if this is best, why does it have the highest stress? Um, sometimes or lowest safety factor. Sometimes the reverse is true and what you're looking for is an efficient uh, object which has good safety factor balance. Right? You don't want it to be all no... For example, if you have someone that's no low safety factor at all, it means it's fairly overbuilt. Um, so normally you would want as much as your object to be as, pos as possible to be not excessively strong. Uh, this is a subtle thing, and we'll spend quite a bit of time talking more about that. Displacements are fairly obvious, I think. It's no surprise what we tend to get. So the movement is total, and we can, for example, see in the X. Keep it in mind, this is a circular part, so you can change to, for example, Z. And we have a bear a very small value along with negative z being positive up and we're pushing down so no surprise what we're seeing there um, reaction force uh, complicated later strain of course linked to stress contact pressure no surprise we see it where we would expect except where it pulls away so this is where the separation occurs. So a little view of the separation. I'll pull this out to get a view of where contact force is highest. Contact pressure, sorry, and contact force. This is a little vague um, and is quite um, specific to the exact uh, setup of the experiment. Here we can see this is where the frictionless uh, constraint tends to kind of fall apart here. It's not changing our re reality, not too much anyway, but it is a little bit suspect uh, for exact accuracy. Once you've got your thing, you would fill in the circle and do a proper uh, analysis. That's it for this video on what's really going on here and a little bit of how to kind of use Fusion 360 to get a bit of analysis in the simulation pack. Um, thanks for watching and over to you.